welcome to my reading retreat. So what exactly is a reading retreat? Well, I'm about to find that out as well. <laughs> I was kind of inspired by Ann Bogle with Modern Mrs. Darcy. She did before the pandemic, a reading retreat with all these different readers, a part of her book club, and brought them to her house, I believe in Louisville, and they did a book club, they got to peruse her library, her personal library, and they went to different bookstores that she partnered with and got to do some like hand selling and things like that. And I think there was a book exchange, I'm not sure. But this is a solo reading <laughs> retreat. I just wanted to do something away from home, explore a different town I haven't been to before, and just, be one with nature, be one with my books, and not be distracted by technology. I think that's the biggest thing, is I feel like I've been so glued to my phone lately with everything that's happening in the news, just being addicted in a way to social media or obsessed and checking like stats and numbers and likes and follows and every single analytic you can think of to determine quote unquote success. And it's very draining. It keeps me up at night, not because I'm like thinking about all these things, but because I'm looking at my phone right before I go to bed and like the light and everything is just blah. So I wanted to take some time to not do that and found this place. It's a bed and breakfast in Asheville, North Carolina, right outside the Biltmore. I won't be visiting the Biltmore this time, but there are several bookstores in the area that I'll be checking out. There is a bookish cafe called The Book and the Bee that I'm super excited about. I'll be having an afternoon tea there and it's a bookish themed afternoon tea place. And then, yeah, I am hoping to, it's kind of humid out right now, but where I'm staying there has like porches and, and balconies and like things like that where I can sit outside if I want, or it's kind of like a rustic-y area with the, the room that I'm staying in has a sitting room and then the bed that I might not want to read in the bed for too long, maybe when I wake up in the morning or like before I go to bed, but not in the middle of the day. I don't know, like it's it's really cozy. I slept in it last night and like it feels like a weighted blanket, like it was so comfy cozy. Oh, I just loved it. So that might be a problem when I'm trying to read, but I might stay here on this couch or there's a chair over there and um, some chairs sitting outside my room. So that is that. I think that's the general overview of the reading retreat. I have a agenda that I put together, <laughs> right? Itinerary and like a Google Sheets and the my breakfast is going to start in a little bit so i'm going to head over there soon and talk to the owners and get the lay of the land a little bit and explore the main house so i'm kind of in like a cabin or cottage outside of the main house and then the main house has like really beautiful architecture and i'll show you when i do a brief little tour of the place so let's see anything else i want to share with you books obviously what am i going to be reading so here is my book sleeve that i got from really feather and co Feather and Bloom Co. And I just got this probably a month or so ago and it's London themed. I actually absolutely love it. And I have just two books in here that I'm gonna bring to breakfast and then probably just read around here if necessary. But I have Before the Coffee Gets Cold where I got from Tombola Books in Tampa. And then Eight Perfect Murders by Peter Swanson that I got at Joseph Beth. So, <laughs> Ah, this is a bookish themed murder book. Great. I'm staying by myself and in the middle of the woods. <laughs> it's reading a thriller. That's smart. And then this is a kind of like a, a book about memories or if you had one last cup of coffee with somebody from that has passed, what would that experience be like? And then your experience kind of ends when your coffee gets cold. So that one could be kind of interesting. And this is also translated fiction, which is exciting. So that is the plan for right now. I've brought many other books besides that. These are just the two that I plan to read today. So the plan is for today, breakfast, read in the main house, then probably read, read here for a little bit, then go to afternoon tea, and then explore some bookstores, read the place. I'm, oh yeah, the place I'm also staying at has like this wine reception every night at like 4.30. So I'm gonna go drink some wine on the balcony and read there and then probably go get some dinner. There's a lot of breweries and cideries. I am more of a cider fan than beer, which is a shame because this place is like known for beer and brewery. So that's kind of a, a shame, but I'm gonna take advantage of the cideries and enjoy that experience. So that is the plan. You got a couple of shots of the place when I came in last night 
and I will do some other b-roll shots me me reading of course and then maybe do like quick reviews here and there this won't be like a full reading vlog like I've done in the past where I'm stopping it at different points along the book that I'm reading it probably will just be a general check-in and then like hey I finished this moving on to the other one so that's what you can plan I probably I'll try my best not to do spoilers if I'm about to I'll say something and you can fast forward if you want but yes yeah I'm gonna go head to breakfast and I'll catch you later <music> So I grabbed some pillows from the bedroom and took one of the blankets off the bed. So one of my notes for when I write my article of how to plan a reading retreat is make sure you have plenty of blankets and pillows depending on if it's like a warmer or cooler spot or like how you want to be comfy and cozy while reading. So yeah, I am more than halfway done before the coffee gets cold and I'm loving it. It's such a unique story and way to think about not necessarily like regrets, but maybe like what ifs or like appreciating the present and what you can do for the future instead of focusing so much on the past. So that I think has been pretty cool. So this I will probably finish after lunch. I'm about to head out to the Book and the Bee and grab some afternoon tea and then hit up two bookstores. And while I'm at one of those stores, I didn't bring a sweatshirt or a long sleeve shirt, so I'm probably going to buy one of those and support a local indie wherever I am by wearing that shirt and being nice and warm while I'm reading the rest of this reading retreat. And a couple of things I forgot to mention. One, well I guess they all encompass the same thing. It all has to do with when I asked you all on Instagram what you think I should do for my reading retreat. One of which was to choose between beach or mountains and you all chose mountains so here I am. And then sweet or salty snacks. I chose salty so I have a bunch of uh, Cheez-Its and popcorn based off y'all's recommendations and then I also brought some fruit because I, I need to stay somewhat healthy so I did listen I do have salty snacks but I also have some sweet ones naturally sweet so it's not like chocolate so I, I will count that and then uh, what else oh yeah I had asked if you all wanted me to do smaller books and have a large quantity of those or one big book and you all chose the smaller one. So this constitutes a smaller book, almost done. Should be able to finish this today and then I'm gonna jump into the Eight Perfect Murders, I think, and then see if I can finish that tonight. I also wanna go for a run. I didn't get up early this morning because I was exhausted from my drive and it was like, there was an advisory for fog and I thought it was gonna be really humid, which it was, but now it's real, it's kind of cooler out. So I might run before dinner and I might do pick up for dinner because I'm like, meh, I kind of want to stay in and tomorrow will be more in and then I'll go out for dinner and get cider or something. So that's the plan. <laughs> it's always uh, subject to change as I always say, but I am having a good time so far, getting a lot of reading done. I've been listening to my ASMR, which is, I typed in like fall cozy music or ambiance. So I think that is hitting the spot. Perfectly. So I'm going to head to lunch and I'll talk to you later.
perfectly splendid if you know Haunting of Bly Manor. <laughs> you know that reference. But I had a fantastic afternoon tea at the Book and the Bee and it's just reinvigorated my desire to own, run, and just have a fantastic book themed afternoon tea slash bed and breakfast experience. It was British or London themed throughout the whole place. I was in I think the London room and then next door or like one of the other rooms in the the building was like a library wallpaper themed room and I'm like oh my god this is amazing and it was just fantastic and then the stairs going up had the different titles of books which I hope to have like in my own home one day that would be amazing so I did that and then I went to one bookstore. I said I was gonna go, well technically I went to two. I went to Malaprops and then I went to Bookends used bookstore which is attached to the Pack Library in downtown Asheville, which I wasn't able to find anything that I wanted there, but I got three, <laughs> three books from Malaprops. So the books that I picked out, super happy with. I got The Overstory by Richard Powers and this was on the Pulitzer Prize award winning bookshelf display that they had and it looked intriguing because of like the nature and everything I think I might have seen this somewhere I I know I know it's a Pulitzer Prize winner and you think it'd be like all over the place but I, I honestly haven't seen it too much which I think is a good thing but it's environmental fiction which I am very intrigued by like I love going green I've been on two environmental alternative spring break trips when I was in college and grad school and it's just a really important topic for me so this I think is going to be phenomenal and speak to a lot of like my personal values and like what I think about our planet and the direction we're going with it so I'm very excited about this and then they do this really cool thing called blind date with a book so I picked up two which they had informed me if I've had these books read them before or don't think I'm gonna like them I can bring them back with the receipt and get like a store credit so I, that was before I knew that, I'm like, oh, like what if I already have it? I'll probably just donate it to a little free library or like do a giveaway or something. So we'll see, maybe that will be the case. Like I, I still will be in town after I open these for like another day and a half. So I could technically return them if I do have them or don't think I'd be interested in them, but we'll see. So the first one is, it's not possible to write any better without showing off. Utopian community, re revelatory, gorgeous language, magical, ambitious. And I should say, if you're not familiar with Blind Date with the book, it's literally, you don't know what the book is, and there's like clues written on the front based off of genre, a, I don't know, like some kind of pop culture reference, like something that you might have an idea, but the idea is that you're gonna be surprised and hopefully enjoy what you're going to see when you open it up. So I've done this for my friends for like Valentine's Day. I've give, gifted them books or we've also done like here are four or five books. You pick one that you like on Valentine's Day. <laughs> it's, it's one of our traditions. So I'm excited to participate from a bookstore because I've never done this before. So let's see what this one is about. Also, can we get an amen? Local indies. Woo -woo. Ooh. So this is actually timely or like, I don't know, like very, um, I guess timely or, or a good coincidence. I don't know what the word I'm trying to say is, but it's Arcadia by Lauren Groff. So I have Fates and Furies by Lauren Groff and then I just bought Florida by her when I was down in Florida, <laughs> in uh, St. Pete's uh, in Tampa. And then this, I I've, haven't heard too much about this one. What was the thing again? <laughs> what was it? Um, you, oh, Utopian Community. I love reading about Utopian societies. Um, magical Ambitious. Okay, so let me read the synopsis. In the 1970s, in the fields of Western New York State, a few dozen idealists set out to live off the land, founding a commune centered on the grounds of a decaying mansion called Arcadia House. Arc Arcadia follows this romantic utopian dream from its hopeful start through its heyday. Arcadia's inhabitants include Handy, the charismatic leader, his wife Astrid, a midwife, Abe, a master carpenter, Hannah, a baker and historian, and Abe and Hannah's only child, Bit. While Arcadia fits in, or while Arcadia rises and falls, Bit to ages and changes. He falls in love with Helly, Handy's lovely troubled daughter, and eventually he must face the world beyond Arcadia. Wow, this sounds amazing. How come I've never heard of this before? 
hard. This sounds incredible. So thank you to Malaprofs for suggesting this. All right, next up we have this one, A Magical Realm. Nothing is as it seems, fairy tale gone wrong. Quote, if Hermione Granger had been an American who had never received an invitation to Hogwarts, this might have been her story. The sequel is coming soon. So intriguing. I'm a big Hermione fan. And so I have no idea what this is. Is it young adult? I have no idea. Let's check it out. Ooh. Huh. Okay. Haven't heard of this. I think that's exciting. So it's The Thinking Woman's Guide to Real Magic by Emily Croy Barker. Okay. Huh. All right. All right, here we go. During a miserable weekend at a friend's wedding, Nora Fisher wanders off and somehow finds herself in another realm. There, she meets glamorous and endlessly charming Alyssa, who introduces Nora to a decadent new world and to her gorgeous son, Raglan. Raglan. Nora herself feels different, more attractive, more popular, more at ease. It's almost too good to be true. But when the elegant veneer of this dreamland shatters, Nora finds herself in a fairy tale gone incredibly wrong. Her only real ally and a reluctant one at that is the, ma is the magician Ariandiel, a grim figure with a biting tongue and a shrouded past. With his help, Nora soon discovers that the only way she can survive is by learning real magic herself. Huh, I'm very intrigued by this. Fun, seductive, and, and utterly engrossing. Huh. Yeah, I I have high hopes or I don't know, I'm like excited about this one. Interesting. I wonder what the sequel is. I'm already thinking about the sequel. That's sad. Let's see. Does it have anything about what the sequel's called? Okay, well there you go. Here are my two blind dates with the book, and I will add these to my TBR, <laughs> my ever-growing TBR. And yeah. Cool. So it is three o'clock in the afternoon. So I think I'm gonna read for a little bit. The wine social, I think is at four. So I was gonna do that, have a glass of wine and probably go for a run because I'm like itching to get outside and just like, I've just been laying down or like sitting around all day, eating, reading. I need to be like active a little bit more even though I walked around downtown some. So I would think I'm gonna do that and then probably put on some more ASMR. Maybe like a, like not haunted, but like spooky kind of one. And then dive into Eight Perfect Murders because I think I'm just about done before the coffee gets cold. So I'll probably finish that by the wine time. And then by the time I get back here, it'll be a ghost. I mean, it's about murders and not ghosts. So it'll be a murder mystery night in a woods <laughs> kind of night. Uh, yeah, it's going great y'all. <laughs> hi y'all happy saturday we're on the second full day of the reading retreat so to catch you up on what i did last night when i got back from the bookstores i did a little recap for you all of what i bought and then i read a little bit and finished before the coffee gets cold so i didn't realize this was a sequel or, or they have a sequel of this and it's four more stories of individuals who sit down at the chair and want to have one last moment or live in the past or future with a loved one or, or, or some significant person in their life. So I thought the story was super unique. I gave it five out of five stars. I will most likely be writing a review for it. There's a few things I have tabbed in here, but it just made me think so much more about like what the present looks like. And I think I had said that in an earlier segment of this vlog and how like it's we can dwell in the past or like overthink the future but what can we do now that will kind of get us onto a good path or somewhere that we can be happy so that I really enjoyed and then I didn't end up going to the wine reception I had said I wanted to get out and about a little bit so I started going for a run and then my legs get kind of tired because <laughs> there's a lot of hills around here so I stopped running and just walked around a lot of the neighborhoods and these houses are so beautiful they have like beautiful like cobblestone and like woodwork and they're just stunning and they're not cookie cutter they're all so different and I don't know it was just nice to be in like a serene neighborhood and not be by like the rushing past of uh, cars and everything near like the downtown area which was really congested where I'm staying at is like right on the edge of a neighborhood so I was able to walk around 
and just enjoy the, I don't know, like the non-touristy spot, but I just like that to see how, like if I were to live here, what the, would that look like and what would my neighbors be like and all that. So I stopped at a park that was in the neighborhood and um, just walked around there. They had some playground equipment, some tennis courts, some basketball courts, things like that. And I did some like calisthenic, I don't know, squats <laughs> and lunges and things like that just to activate my legs a little bit. So I ended up walking. I was supposed to run five miles yesterday. I ended up walking 4.7. So... I'd say that is a win. Then I came back and ordered some dinner from this place that's all vegan. So technically I am vegetarian, but I do enjoy vegan meals and it was great. I had like a tostada salad. So it had like cashew based cheese or like queso and then like tofu chorizo, which was really, really good. Then I started this. Let's, yes, read a murder mystery book when I'm in the middle of the woods or the mountains, but that's fine. So I'm about this far in. I read a little bit this morning at breakfast. I read 100 pages last night before I went to bed, and it's very intriguing. It's about a, it says first person story of a guy that owns a bookstore that's a murder mystery crime genre store, and he's approached by an FBI agent to go through these murders that are based off this blog post he wrote called Eight Perfect Murders, which is all of these fictional tales by Agatha Christie and a lot of famous like fiction or crime fiction writers that are like perfectly done or like the perfect crime. And then we're finding that there is somebody that's a serial killer, I guess, that is recreating all of those murders in real life. And it's tied back to this bookstore owner somehow. We're trying to figure out how so it is very good. It's very page turner esque. And yeah, I hope to finish this before I head out on my next adventure. So I just got back from breakfast and we'll read here for a little bit. I did find another bookstore I wanted to check out. It is a queer feminist bookstore called Firestorm. They also have really nice shirts. I really want to buy one. It's like a crop top, which, or like a cropped sweater pullover thing. I'm way too old, I guess, to be like trying to figure out what the name of those are, but it looks super cozy and I love the graphic on the front. Uh, so I'm definitely gonna buy that there and then see what other books they have. Maybe just buy one. Pfft. It's like eating one chip out of a bag. You can't just do that. So we'll do that and then hit up a brewery. I like really wanna get a cider or something that is known in Asheville, like for the beer, the tap rooms, the brewery, cideries, whatever. And that'll probably be lunch before, I don't know, I think coming back here, maybe going to the wine reception. I don't know. I say all these things and these plans. And then <laughs> when it comes to it, I'm like, meh, I'm just going to read or I'm just going to take a nap or whatever. So yeah, that's what I have planned. And then the next book I read, thinking about this one next, it's All the Ever Afters, The Untold Story of Cinderella's Stepmother by Danielle Teller. So I love like fiction not necessarily retellings, but like exploring other characters. And my friend Liz at Read by the Color had picked this out for me when I was at Cincy Library Friends and I loved it. So it is an old like library book that has been sold as like a, a used book. So that's why it still has the plastic cover on there. I have to find, I think there's some videos out there that shows how you can take this off because I donated a few of these type of books to the Little Free Libraries and they and I've looked, they haven't been taken and I think it's because people are afraid that they are actual library books that somebody forgot to return. And I'm like, no. So I need to figure out how to, not that I could, I'm like thinking I'm gonna donate this, but it kind of adds or takes away the appeal of a book if it's like, if you own it, it still has like this plasticky kind of stuff on top of it. But it makes me think, or makes other people think maybe that you stole it, so. Don't want that to happen. Although, just found out my, uh, the Cincy Library, the Public Library of Cincinnati in Hamilton County just released that they are not fining people for late fees or late books or movies or anything anymore forever, which I think is amazing. I also think it's, it might be, I don't know, like, I don't want to hoard books. I don't take too many things out from the library, but I'm just fearful that people might abuse that. I mean, I have to look into it a little bit more. I'm just, it's just, I know if I'm waiting for a book to come and it says like, oh, there's five people ahead of you or whatever, I don't know when to expect those books to come because if people like know that they can turn it in late and then just don't, that makes me kind of nervous. I would hope people have like, are, are decent people to <laughs> return it by the date that it's supposed to be returned by. 
I know I'm, I'm very conscious of that. If I know I'm not going to read it, and like I know other people are waiting for it, I take it back. So anyway, that's my little rant about late fees, which I, I think is good for um, just like economically, that's good for individuals that don't have to worry about paying that fine, but also thinking about like the enjoyment of those books and materials. It, we basically can own them, which I'm like, Ugh, I hope people don't do that. So we'll see. Anyway, that is the plan for today. It's that I end up, I'm leaving, I have to leave tomorrow morning because I have an early volleyball game. I didn't know my schedule until I left on Thursday. I was hoping it was a later game, but it turns out it's an earlier one, so that means I have to leave earlier, which I'll probably just get breakfast, maybe go for a walk in the morning, something, because it'll be a five-ish hour drive, and then jump on a volleyball court, so that'll be fun. So I'll probably just do some audiobooks and call some people, maybe listen to some podcasts. My friend Ben, I called him the other day for his birthday, and he was talking to me about this podcast called Crime Junkie, which I had just finished on my way down here. Um, the A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. It's the first and I think a trilogy. And I absolutely loved it. It had a lot of testimonies and like interviews and things like that. In audiobook was freaking phenomenal because it had different vo voice actors and everything. So he recommended Crime Junkie because it's a new episode every week about unsolved, mostly unsolved crimes, murders. And I might dive into that since I'm like really jumping back into that genre again. So... Yeah, that is a very long update for you. I uh, will catch up with you later. since it's in the middle of the afternoon. It's almost three o'clock and last time I talked to you all, or at least I was finishing up Eight Perfect Murders, so I finished this, gave this a solid four out of five stars. I liked it. I didn't blow my mind in terms of thrillers or murder mysteries. Like, I didn't guess the ending. And I wrote on Instagram when I posted that I was reading it, after I'd finished it, somebody had said like, oh yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Like one of the best thriller books of, of um, my collection, yada, yada, yada. And I said, oh my gosh, like I should have seen that ending. Like I get frustrated when I'm like, oh my God, how did I not see that coming? Or at least part of it. I'm like, it was staring me right in the face. So that's what kind of happened. So that's not where I gave it a four out of five. I just, I don't know. I thought it was cool that it was a book about books, but I, it just didn't, like I said, like be... It wasn't the like, oh my god, like everybody needs to read this book. I think it's enjoyable. My one friend said she was adding it to her list and I said no need. I will give this to you or let you borrow it when I see you next. So I'm excited to share this with her and maybe talk with her about it later. But yeah, I think it was cool that it included the books about books element and it had it it had me guessing, honestly. I like I wish I had taken notes of the different people that it could have been. It had like different lines and because I just finished A Good Guide to uh, a Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson, she had like a murder board and I'm like, man, I, I need to like start creating those and figure out like connections and use like pins and, and string and everything. So I'm like, darn, I should have done that. I don't know if I would have gotten it by then because I was so engrossed in the story. I just wanted to keep going and not really think too much, if that makes sense. But yeah, there's that one. Then I started All the Ever Afters by Danielle Teller. So I'm not far into this at all. I started reading this when I was at the brewery or the, the White Labs kitchen and tap room, I think it's called. I stopped there for a cider and read a few pages. I think like 30 pages. Yeah, 33 pages there. And this is interesting. It goes back and forth between the time when Cinderella's stepmom is like a child or like she's 10 or 11 years old and we learn about that as her past and then it goes into the present I guess as Cinderella 
or Ella or Princess, I think Elfrida is what her, her formal name is, is like out of the, the stepmother and the stepsister's hair. Like she's living her life and like doing her thing. So it's kind of cool to see like after what we know with Cinderella and like the before. So we're not really rehashing the Cinderella story. We're going backwards in the past of the stepmother whose name is Agnes and then forward into the present or like the future of when Cinderella marries the prince. So that I think is pretty cool. And I don't know, it's giving me some kind of like sympathy for her. Um, and I'm also like have this strong desire to watch one of Once Upon a Time again. Like I've already seen it several times through. I haven't watched the spinoff, have no interest in watching the spinoff at all. But I'm just like, man, like I'm getting into like the fairy tale vibe. And I think, I don't know, it's for some reason it's giving me a fall vibe too. So autumnal, we're getting ready for fall. It's almost September. Once Upon a Time is also like autumnal because it's like in a New England town, I think. So yeah, but I had posted on Twitter <laughs> right after I went here saying, okay, my book haul for August is out of control in general, not just this month, but like this year. I like wanted to do the unread challenge which I am doing from the unread shelf Whitney Conrad and I am reading a bunch off my shelf but I'm also replacing and adding some on there it's like the what like three steps forward five step back kind of thing but maybe reverse like I read or I take two books off but I add five more kind of thing whatever that looks like so I went to Firestorm Books and Coffee Co-op and loved it. So this is amazing. They had a lot of like social justice books there. They had a lot of um, like just different issues about like race and culture and environmental and just a lot like a wide array of books and I enjoyed it and I got to talk to um, one of the booksellers there. We chatted a little bit and then I picked up three books. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm just gonna buy one. But they didn't have a shirt there in my size. So I'm like, I'll make up for it for buying two more books even though I probably will buy a shirt later. I don't know, cause it's so unique. I have so many bookish t-shirts. I think I only have like two or three sweatshirts. One of which is an independent bookstore sweatshirt from Sundog Books in Florida. So I'm like, well, it's getting cooler out. I need comfy clothes. Anyway, here are the books that I got. First one is They Both Die at the End by Adam Silvera. So this I'd heard kind of a little bit about. So this is, I think it's like a futuristic, apocalyptic kind of novel where these two, I think there are two boys, two young men, receive on the same day that they're going to die that day. Like it's announced like, oh, we're sorry to inform you, like today's your last day. And that's like common for a lot of folks, like when it's their time to go, like they get a message so they can live out their last day however they see fit. So these two boys go throughout their day together and yeah, and I'm guessing they're going to die at the end because of the title. So I'm expecting it to be sad, but it's also like a, if you knew when your last day was or like, you know you're gonna die that day, like, what would you do? So, yeah, it should be interesting. Then I picked up The 10,000 Doors of January by Alex E. Harrow. I don't think I've seen this anywhere. If I have, it might have been Beth at Books Nest over on YouTube and Instagram, but I'm not sure. So this, I think, is also like a book about books where January is the main character and she's able to like travel into all these different books and like live out those stories, I believe. So that I think could be kind of fun. It also has like these deckled pages. I don't know if you can tell, like the textured ones. Oh, I love that. And lastly, I got Darius the Great is Not Okay. And this just struck me because of the cover itself. It's like bright. It's kind of graphic novel-y. I don't think that's what it is on the inside. I don't think they have any. Yeah, they don't have any like graphics or, or things like that. But it's set in Iran where Darius, he's an, an Iranian American, but he goes over to Iran and befriends somebody over there. And it's just about finding yourself or finding your place because he doesn't feel like he belongs in America or at a school, but then in Iran, he's not fully Iranian. So like, what does that look like? But uh, yeah, and I saw that they also had a sequel there in hardback, but I wanted to read this one first before I jump into that. So this one I'm excited about as well. So as you can see, there is a predicament of, <laughs> I came down here with like, oh, I'm gonna read like four books for this retreat. I'm on book three, which is fine. I'm listening, I finished an audiobook. I'll probably finish another audiobook. 
my first hour of my drive back home. So, and then I, I bought six books <laughs> from Malaprops and then from Firestorm. So, yeah. So, what am I doing about it? From September 1st through mid-November, that will be a book buying and book receiving ban. So I'm saying September 1 only because I had ordered books from Trident booksellers in Boston. They had, because of the, the hurricane, I think it was Henri that came through or a tropical storm that came through there a few weeks ago. They had given a discount code to say like, hey, we're gonna do free shipping if you order from us on this day, which was the day of the hurricane or tropical storm. So I did that and ordered two books. I ordered the second book in the Fallen Kingdom series and then The Eighth Life, which is like a huge chunky book. So they just sent me a tracking number, but it doesn't say when it'll arrive. Today is the 28th, I think. So I have three days to get it here before. And that's that's why I'm like, I think it'll be here before September 1st and that will be like, okay, cut off, no more books. And I'll have September, October and half of November to get through several books before I can get any more. And I'm saying mid-November because that's also when my birthday is. I'll be turning 32 and I have some gift certificates that I wanna use at both Bookloft, no, three places, Bookloft, the Cincy Book Bus and Joseph Beth. Then from there, I don't know, because I'll most likely have gift cards from like birthday gifts and Christmas gifts and everything. So I'll need to figure out my next band from there. It's just so exciting and so obsessive and addicting in a way to get new books, that feeling. <sighs> Someone help. Anyway, I am gonna continue reading and then I'm still on the fence because I just had, oh, that was what, when I was at White Labs, I had a cider. So I'm not, I think I mentioned I'm not really a beer person, but I had cider. But I wanted to pick something up for my boyfriend since he really likes beer and he wasn't able to come on this trip with me. And at this point, he have already received it by the time you're watching it. But he, and I, it was funny, I went up to um, the person behind the counter. I said, look, I'm not a beer person can you help me get a gift for somebody that I know likes these kinds of beers? And I, I told her what they were and she's like, okay, like you want to taste test them? I'm like, sure. I don't know if I'm the best judge, but I'll t taste them and see. And I tasted two of them that she recommended and I preferred, I preferred one over the other. So I don't know if he'll like it. We'll see. And uh, this is what I got. So I got a crowler. It was the blonde. I don't know what these mean but we'll see if he likes it. Anyway, my battery charger or battery is about to die. So I will talk to you all later and catch up. here since I'm about to head home and well first get breakfast and then drive home but that concludes the vlog last night before or last time I checked with you while well, I was reading this and then I took a break oh I went for a run around this river park trail area and it was beautiful the first mile was a little rough because like the sun was like beating on my face but then when I went to the shaded areas and like more along the river, it was gorgeous and perfect. So I did a four mile trail run, which was needed because I felt like I was just laying around all day, which is a good thing, but my legs were, were feeling it and getting kind of sore. So I needed to stretch them a bit. And then I grabbed dinner and picked up cookout. Oh my gosh, I haven't had cookout since like grad school and it was amazing. I think it's like a Southern thing. I had it in Virginia when I was in school there, but I grabbed a M&M milkshake and that was fantastic. So I had that while I watched a little bit of the bold type and then read some more of all the other afters. I'm, <laughs> I was able to take the plastic cover off. I looked up some like YouTube videos and I'll maybe I'll post if I remember to do this in the description how I was able to do that because it might be something you all want to do if you have the same kind of issue. But at the halfway point and it's like getting not dark but there's like some real stuff happening in there and potentially some some content warnings in there 
Um, well, not potentially, there are. And um, I'll put those in again if I remember. But it's it's very interesting. Like the stepmother, Agnes, like she is very strong and she's gaining her independence and like fighting back. And we're still at the point where she's she's had her two daughters and they're very young. And we're not at the point of like meeting Cinderella's father or, or like that family or anything in terms of like her past life, but we're going back and forth into like the future or after what we know of the Cinderella story. And that's very interesting as well. So yeah, I love this. Like, thank you so much, Liz from Break by the Color for suggesting this. But in terms of the reading retreat itself, I do have like some, oh, make sure I do this next time. Make sure I don't do this next time. And like there will be next time. Maybe I'll do this once a year. I think that'll be pretty interesting. Maybe I'll come back to Asheville. I'm not sure. There could be, I'm, I'm thankful that my job has these things called summer Fridays where I can take off like Thursday night, like what I did here and drive somewhere and then spend a three day weekend doing this retreat. So I'll probably wait until next summer to do something like this again, even though I love the idea of like a winter cabin or fall cabin. It just, it's just hard with, well, travel in general these days and then just wanted to have enough vacation time to make it worth it and not like a quick trip but I do need to just be more realistic with how many books I wanted to read because it's it kind of reminded me of a Dewey's readathon or like a 24-hour readathon where I've read just about the same amount as I would in like 24 hours but I added on going to bookstores exploring the area going to an afternoon tea shop which I'm glad I did but I just want to make sure I know that going in, that even though I, I had like six books I wanted to read, there's other things to be doing and exploring here that I, mean, I could be holed up anywhere and not really see the outside, but I wanted to see what Asheville was known for. And I, I even thought about like, oh, this would be a great place to have my bachelorette party one day. <laughs> that was a random thought I had during this weekend. But yeah, the location was great. The place I stayed in was great. The I think I need to be better about picking out food and realistic of like how tired I am in the evenings. I'm trying to think what else. I'll, I'll have a blog post about my my thoughts and feelings and like what I want to do next time in the next few weeks up on um, incessantbookworm.com. But yeah, I'm happy I did it. It is different doing it solo. I think a bunch of people I know in the Cincinnati Bookstagram group is going to try to do a group one in November and that should be interesting. I just know, I don't I think it would be more of a social thing, which is fine, but for me I think I would be personally frustrated if I didn't get a lot of reading done, which sounds terrible. If it's called a reading retreat, you would think there'd be some reading, but I don't know what they're planning, what their schedule's going to be like, but that'd be something I'd be anxious about. Uh, not knowing when I'd be able to read and feeling like I was being antisocial if I chose to read and not stay with the group. So, yeah, that's the only thing I would be nervous about. Unless I found people like just like me that are like, very introverted, like want their alone time, and then maybe during a meal is when we catch up or something. I don't know. But anyway, thank you so much for coming on this journey with me. If you have any tips or comments about reading retreats, please let me know in the comments. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Feel free to hit subscribe or the notification bell to know when I post next. It's been a pleasure taking you on this journey. I'm digging these reading vlogs. I think I'm going to head in this kind of direction in the new year, in 2022. I'm going to finish out the like monthly reading vlogs, but I think I'm going to transition potentially into longer form where I'm, I'm doing multiple things. It's not just about trying to finish one book. It's just like updates and stuff like I did here. Yeah, if that's of interest, let me know. Anyway, I hope you have a great day. Thank you for watching and happy reading.